In cooking, as in the rest of life, I believe in playing to my strengths, not my weaknesses, and I am unapologetically an enthusiast, not an expert, which is my way of saying, however awful this sounds, that I leave any job that requires patience, dexterity, or even brisk competence to others. I don't wish to state the obvious, and yes, fishmongers do sell fish, but the point for me is that they will do all the fiddly jobs that I can't do. I mean, I'm not just buying their produce, you know, fabulous though it is, I'm buying their expertise because, you know, in cooking you just have to stack the odds in your favour. So if someone else is going to do all the hard work for you, well, frankly, you're just taking the stress out of the kitchen. Look, I do understand that the idea of making a crab sauce for pasta sounds incredibly involved, not to say fancy, but you're just going to have to believe me when I say that it's about as simple as making you know, spaghetti with tomato sauce like you might do every day for the kids for tea. Look, my lovely crab. Now, culinary weapon of choice here. <laughs> I can lift it down. My pestle and mortar. Well, this takes no time, so I'm going to get the water on now. It should anyway be boiled from the kettle. Huge pan. Always makes it better with pasta to use as much water as you can. Not least because the temperature won't sink as much when you add the pasta. Right, time for a bit of upper body workout, so I'm going to get rid of this. Garlic first. I mean, this pasta sauce needs to be very garlicky. Let's peel them. Okay, now a bit of salt, about a tablespoonful. I mean, this sort of amount, small handful. And I'm just going to pulverize the garlic to a wonderfully sort of dense, sticky puree. Right, so I've got the wonderful sort of deep heat of the garlic, and now I want the sort of fiery spikiness of some red chilli in the... I don't know whether this is the pestle or this is the mortar. I'm presuming that this is the mortar and this is the pestle. Don't write in. OK, in they go. And these wonderful sort of clumps of red are going to be pounded to a sort of coral sunset paste. I must say, I do like any form of kitchen activity which sort of demands work that doesn't need any dexterity, and this about sums it up. Now, get the pasta in. I use linguine, which I suppose in a way is like a cross between spaghetti and tagliatelle. Slightly wider, but also wonderfully dense, which makes it a great vehicle to carry the sauce. Now, the main event. This is about 100 grams of brown crab meat. And about twice that, so 200 of white. Okay, just fork through. And now some olive oil, about 125 millilitres. I find that easiest to use an American half cup measure. Mm. Right, lemon. A lot of zest as well as juice, just because I want this to be really quite definitely lemony. I mean, not astringent, it's all got to work together. Okay, so that's my zest. Right, now just the juice. Beautiful colours. Let's just fork it through, and that is all there is to it. I'm just going to go and check how the pasta's doing. Looks like it's another couple of minutes or so, which gives me time do my bits and pieces. I want to chop some herbs. Now I have to say, you don't need to use this crab as a sauce for pasta. It is really wonderful, just heaped on a plate and eaten with a pile of hot, hot brown toast. But then again, having recently released myself from a low carbohydrate diet, I find I can leave no loaf unturned. And any bread is really wonderful with this. I'm just going to have a quick rhapsodic dip. Mm. 
and that looks absolutely perfect. Just need to turn the heat off and drain and dress. bit you need to be strong for. Mm. Not as much sauce maybe as you think for this amount of pasta but then I want this to be kind of lightly dressed in it rather than drenched. Oh, that's it. Have a quick swirl around. Mm. So lovely. Right, watercress and parsley. Scarcely wilt in the heat really. Mm. So beautiful when it's flecked with the green too. Mm. Right. Can't wait. Mm. Perfect. I make this squid salad such a lot and one of the things that draws me to it is the deeply green herb rich dressing. I've got mint and coriander there and I'm going to add a little parsley and to this lovely bed of deep deep green a lime, whole lime and it really adds something the whole fruit because you get all the juiciness of the pulp as well so not just the sharpness but also a bit of bit of body. Garlic clove, which I'm going to snip a bit to make the chopping easier. Little green chilli, just for a bit of heat. Some fish sauce. I love the sharpness of lime, but I adore the saltiness of fish sauce. And a sprinkle, about a teaspoon of sugar, just to counter the saltiness and sharpness of the dressing so far. Also, I think it brings out the flavour of the herbs. My mother always put sugar in mint sauce, so it reminds me of that. On to blitz. And then some ground nut or any vegetable oil. Ground nut oil becomes a wonderful carrier for the herbs, the garlic, the lime in the dressing. Perfect. Oh, it is so deeply, intensely green. It's like liquid snooker bays. Look at this. Well, that's the dressing. Now the squid. Baby squid, really tender. Which I've cut into rings and I'm going to quick fry until the rings turn sort of pale pink. Really, it just needs a couple of minutes. I love how the white of the squid takes on the palest of pinks and those crowns of tentacles curling up so deeply pinkly. Mm. And that looks about it. I'm gonna decant into a bowl. some salt over these. I'm just going to put the squid there just to cool a bit while I get on with the salad, which is nothing more laborious than arranging a few salad leaves. I mean, there's rocket here, but you could use a packet of designer leaves from the supermarket. And on to these lovely bits of straggly green, I'm going to add some red onion that's cut into thin red-tipped half moons and strew on top and now just want to work some of the fabulous green dressing through my pink and white squid the thing about squid when it's this tender is that it's fabulous and melting in texture but it tends not to be very pronounced in taste and so it absorbs this pungent 
herby background perfectly. Now just adorn the top of your beautiful salad with these. Look at these pink crowns of tentacles. Well, I think I'm just going to spoon just a little bit of the dressing over the leaves. I love this so much. And that is it. Mm. I'm going to have some now. Mm. Lovely. Right, I'm going into the garden for a spot of our fresco cooking this afternoon. Please come with me. Okay, ready to barbie. Now, these fish fillets will take hardly any time to cook. I'm going to put some foil on the barbecue because otherwise I find the fish just sticks to the wires and I don't want to mar the beauteousness of my fillets. Slap them down. Mm. And as quick as these are, I mean, the shredded salad is even quicker. I mean, one, because, of course, there's no cooking, and two, because I've already chopped everything up. First, carrot. Some spring onions. Lovely. Hot red chilli pepper, although not as hot as it could be because I've taken the seeds out, so you get the heat but intense sweetness. And some green pawpaw, which looks a bit like cucumber but is much crunchier and nuttier. And now some really lovely pink raw peanuts, lovely and sweet, and really earthy, pungent coriander. So these just need to be roughly chopped. Okay, so I'm just gonna add these and then attempt in my um, rather alarmingly clumsy way to turn over the fish. Be patient with me. It's just very difficult not to tear this lovely skin. Here goes again. You don't need to use red mullet, beautiful though these are, as you can see. Salmon fillets are fabulous too, a lovely coral. But chicken, anything you want, I mean, please. Okay, now, we've got all that lovely crunchy sweetness. So, we need a bit of sharpness to offset that. Lime, very sour. Just one, but squeeze out well. Mm. Some fish sauce, and it's this sharp note which makes the whole thing so refreshing and, if I may say so, very unofficially inviting. A bit of sugar to melt into the sourness of the fish sauce and lime. You need that, balances everything in life, in food. Stir. Well, we're done. Now I'm going to fight with my inner clumsy self and outer, I have to say, and get these lovely pink babies off the grill. And just strew with those lovely crunchy shards. Mm. Glass of cold beer and this fish. Mm. I know everyone always thinks I'm completely mad for saying that I like cooking on weekends that are meant to be relaxing, but I have to say, this is my only way of finding a bit of space for myself. And besides, you can play the martyr slaving over a hot stove when in fact you've got everyone else doing the hard work like bathing the children. It's a very good scam. And added to which, this is incredibly easy to make. It's a Carolyn fish curry and I probably should say straight off that I have never been to Kerala or anywhere near, but the point about Carolan food or all South Indian food is that it is somehow fresher tasting, sour and with coconut milk, different flavours in North Indian food. A couple of onions here, 
cut into thin half moons, a bit of salt to stop them burning. And while they start frying, I'm going to go and get the fish. Use any white fish you want. I've used bream. Kilo and a quarter, thereabouts, cut into chunks. I want it thick enough to hold its shape while it's cooking. And it does take the barest moment to cook. And now a little bit of an operation. For this I need some turmeric, about a teaspoon here. Mm, beautiful golden powder. And again, a bit of salt. And I wouldn't normally do this, but the trouble with putting your hands in turmeric is that you get stained yellow. It looks like you've got a terrible sort of 50 a day habit. It's really worth doing this because this way the spices go deep into the fish. What I don't want is, you know, nice plain white fish cooked in a curry sauce. I want everything bathed and immersed in loveliness. I mean, this gives a golden colour to everything, but it does have a strange, sort of deep flavour of its own. I think with all curries, it's about building up the level of flavours. Mmm. <laughs> of course, now I have to get them off, but... <laughs> so, on top of these onions, a bit more spice. Again, turmeric, the same amount that was on the fish. In other words, teaspoon. Bit of ground cumin. Mm. I love the way this turns a deep ochre. Couple of more things for flavour and heat. Red chilies, two, and I like a lot of heat, so I leave the seeds in, but if you're in mellower mood, then just de-seed. And that's the fire, but there's a sort of deeper throated heat that comes from ginger, and this is about four centimetres or so, peeled and cut into little shards. So if you can be patient enough, just cook, stirring for a while so that the flavours go deep into the onions. So while this is happening, the sauce itself, well, it couldn't be easier. A can of coconut milk. And a tablespoonful or so of tamarind paste. I mean, you can buy the fruit dried and then you soak it in water and squeeze bits out. This is the easy option. And an old favorite, some concentrated stock, this time fish stock. Can't go anywhere without my little stocks. Now, I'm just going to make this up to the litre mark with some water from the kettle. Stir it together. Just pour it in. And that's it. So once this has come to the boil, I'm just going to immerse the fish, give it a few minutes, and that's supper ready. A little taste. Mmm. I love the sourness of the tamarind against the sweetness of the coconut. And that's, frankly, all over by the singing, really. I'm going to turn it off and then go and say goodnight to the children. And then when I want to eat, because could take some time. Just need to reheat this, cook the fish in it for about four minutes, and supper's ready.
It's just gorgeous. It's mm. mm. okay. oh, lovely. Does she upgrades? And the fish is lovely. It's just firm and light. It's, just it's so sour yes. and sweet at the same time. So I'm going to scoff a lot now, I think.